Good morning and welcome to my next video log for Term 2. Today's a really special day in the life of the school, it's Founders Day. And um, today I wanted to share, um, share a story with you about something really exciting and interesting that one of our staff members is involved in. As you know, at Billanook, we're really interested in educating not just the mind, but also the heart. Something that's very important to us here is helping our students develop a social conscience helping them um, understand that in this egocentric world, they've got a responsibility to other people beyond themselves. And that's why we focus a, a great deal on social justice activities and um, providing our students with learning experiences so that they can develop that social conscience that we think is so important for them to do so. In the social justice space, our school is heavily involved in a range of programs that provide our students with opportunities to learn beyond their academic self things such as the Thai Service Project, Community Service Days, and so on like that. And um, I'm absolutely delighted to um, introduce to you Mrs. Anne Matheson, one of our staff members here who teaches in maths. Welcome, Anne. Thank you. So, Anne, you've worked here now in a part-time capacity for two years, okay. and um, you're involved in something really interesting in Africa, aren't you? I am. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit about uh, what's the program that you're involved in in Africa? Basically, my husband and I built a school um, to meet the needs and to develop good teaching methods in, in Uganda. So how did you come to start a school in Africa? Where did all that begin? Well, it actually had a connection with Billanook because um, your previous deputy principal, uh, Cheryl Motabazi, she uh, and her sister-in-law ran a fundraising dinner for Uganda and my husband and I attended and uh, from there we became interested in Uganda and we really felt the call on our lives to, because we had so much, we wanted to do something for people that had so little. And so before you started the school in Uganda, you were teaching and your husband was teaching as well? No, my husband was actually a pastor at a church, um, administration pastor, and uh, I was teaching, but he is a, has a teaching background. So um, I know everyone would be really interested in hearing a little bit about the school. Can you tell us a little bit about the school? I'd love to. So as I said before, uh, six years ago, we went to a fundraising dinner and from there, we went on short term trips to Uganda and we were able to build uh, houses for orphans and widows in a different form of an orphanage. During that uh, time we became really aware of how bad education was. I was teaching at the local high school mathematics and it, uh, the quality of the teaching was just terrible. And so pa parents were forced to pay for huge amounts of school fees but they weren't getting the benefit of children being educated for life. So at the end of 2011, we bought land to build a primary school. The school started in 2013. We started the school with just lower classes to bring about different methodologies right from the start. The school now has 200 children and we grow a year level at a time so that we'll be fully functioning in 2017. Last year, we had five children who uh, finished primary school with us. They were orphans who had very poor education background and using the different methodology we were excited to see great changes in those children and they were actually able to pass the national examination with second grade passes which is amazing. Um, and so we did something unusual, we had a composite class for those children that needed to be brought up much the same way as Bill and Nook cares for those that have some learning difficulties. We use different technologies. We, we try to do hands-on things. We try to teach using tools rather than just simply copying from the blackboard. Mm. We try to encourage all of the different creative ways that children can learn, not just the academic. Our children come from a variety of homes. They come from homes where parents can afford to pay, some struggle to pay the school fees, and then we have a number of children that are sponsored by people here in Australia. Some of those children, the only food they get during the day is the food that we provide at school. We have been excited to be able to develop some teacher training. So we have had some days where we have brought in teachers from other places and they have been able to get some glimpses into new methodologies as well. We're excited by the change that's happening for children. Children who have very little chance of success are 
now getting a chance for a new life. These children had no hope, but now they have some hope. We have a great group of dedicated teachers. We have wonderful buildings and we are very thankful for the assistance that has been given to us. In particular, I'd like to thank Billanook for the great assistance in providing me with work and the support of that because that helps us do what we are doing in Uganda. So not only have you built a school, but you're also involved in teacher training for, um, for African teachers. That's quite amazing, Anne. Um, when are you heading back to Uganda, Anne? We head back on the 30th of June. And how long will you stay over there for, for the rest of the year? Uh, almost, but one month we'll be back here yep. in that time. And does the Ugandan academic year run January to December like ours? In the schooling it does, in university it works the yeah. northern. So towards the end of the year you'll come back to Australia? Yes. And um, of course one of the contributions that I think we're really proud of at Billanook is that um, we support your programs, don't we? You do. In, in a whole range of different ways, um, none, not the least in... Um, uh, providing uh, a little bit of work for you each year. Oh, I'd just like to take the opportunity to say thank you so much. It means a great deal to, to us that we can come back and I've been able to work and that basically pays us. We uh, are reason pretty close to self-funded and so having work makes a big difference and it's also fantastic the support the staff give and the encouragement staff give as well. So you're, you're really coming back to work for a short period of time to send that money back to Africa aren't you to fund yes. the school over there yes. <laughs> which is really quite amazing. Yes. Yeah. Look it's been um, an absolute privilege Anne to talk with you and, and it's, it's such a privilege for us as a school to be involved in in the program with you as well. You do you do amazing work and it's something that you should be really proud of because we thank are. You. Oh, thank you very much. We really do appreciate it. If anyone is interested in helping Anne with her work in Uganda, please feel free to contact her or myself at the school. I know that any assistance would be um, most certainly gratefully received by her. As I said at the start of our video log, this is Founders Day, 35th birthday of the school. And um, in a really interesting twist, 35 years ago, the Year 7 building was officially opened in June of 1980. Up to that point in time, the school and the students had spent six months in demountables, in portable buildings and in mud. And so today, 35 years ago, was a really important and special day in the life of the school as the current Year 7 building was officially opened. In a really interesting uh, space of serendipity, Today is actually the day when demolition of the building commences. So 35 years after it was officially opened, on the very same day, the demolition of the building takes place to make way for, of course, our new Discovery Centre. And if you keep your eye on our website, you'll be able to see some time-lapse photography of the work as it occurs in our Discovery Centre. I hope you've enjoyed this most recent video log. Thank you very much.